Cellulose is the most abundant molecule on the planet and it would make a great source of biofuel if we can find a way to efficiently break it down. Cellulose is the main ingredient in a plant cell wall. It's also an extraordinarily tough molecule to break down. In order to break down cellulose, we need a cellulase enzyme. The process of finding these organisms is called bioprospecting. In a sense, bioprospecting is simply going into nature and finding the organisms that are cellulitic or that produce cellulase in order to break down the cell walls made of cellulose. For the bioprospecting portion of this lab, you will need four sealable plastic bags. They can be any size, it doesn't matter, you just need to have them sealed at the top. To collect a sample, invert the bag so that it's inside out. Reaching through the inside out bag, collect your sample and close the bag around your sample. To begin setup, you want to sterilize your work area. All you need to do is spray it with either ethanol or any kind of disinfectant like Lysol and wipe down the entire area until you know it is completely coated in your disinfectant. Once you have disinfected your area, take your test tube, caps, and filter paper. You're going to want to take one strip and add it to one test tube. Simply just throw her inside and you are all set for each one. When you're doing this, make sure your hands are sterile too. If you've touched anything in between adding strips and sterilizing, you want to wash your hands. Once you've added your filter paper, you want to add your sterile media. You're going to add five milliliters of your miracle Grow media to each test tube. Once you've added your media solution and your filter paper, you need to press the filter paper flat against the test tube. This is necessary so that the filter paper doesn't fall into the tube and into the media, which would skew your results. To flatten it against the side of the test tube, simply take a sterile pipette with a tip, insert it, and push your filter paper flat against the test tube wall. Try to get it as straight as possible so that it's not at an angle, and try to get it as flat on the bottom as you can. Once you have your paper flattened against the side of the tube and you've added your media, you'll want to cap your tube and then using tape, masking tape, marker, whatever it may be, label your tube with the date and what's inside of your tube. Once you've collected your four samples, as a group you're going to want to decide which two you're going to use. As a group you're going to have to analyze the four samples you collected and decide based on their biological conditions which two are most likely to have the highest cellulitic activity or the highest amount of cellulase production in order to break down cellulose most rapidly and most efficiently. In our case we will choose these two samples. Once you have made your selection you will want to take your sample and with a gloved hand select a pea-sized amount of that sample to add to your test tubes. Once you have your pea-sized amount Take one of your test tubes, remove the cap, tilt it slightly so that the filter paper is on top, and drop your sample into the tube. If your sample gets stuck part way, take a sterile pipette or glass rod and push that sample all the way into its media solution. Recap your test tube. and add a label for what that sample is. You're going to want to repeat these same steps with the same sample so that you have two test tubes of each sample. In any good experiment we want replicates in order to ensure that what we are observing for our results are consistent every time we do it. Add your samples to a shaker one at a time and turn on your shaker adjusting the speed to 1 to 200 revolutions per minute. You will want to observe your samples daily to see if there's any growth or possible activity inside of your tubes. To determine if there's growth or activity, you will want to compare what your tubes look like on the first day to your observations each day thereafter. For example, if there is absolutely no change and it looks exactly the same as it did the first day, with no cloudiness or growth in the tube, there's no change and that likely means there was no growth or cellulase activity in the microbes in your tube. If you see cloudiness but no breakage of the paper, that means possible activity. So if your solution gets darker, cloudier, or if you see a color change or growth on your filter paper, 
that likely means there's possible cellulase activity in the microbes in your tube. If you see a complete breakage of your tube's paper, that means definite cellulase activity. The reason this test works as a way to measure cellulitic activity is because filter paper is cellulose, or the same molecule we find in plant cell walls. The only way to break down filter paper as a source of energy is to produce the cellulase enzyme. If you or I ate this piece of paper, it would simply pass through us undigested because we do not produce the enzymes necessary to break this down into its individual molecules. Microbes that produce cellulase can break this down into its individual sugar subunits and use that sugar for their energy. But they can only do this if they produce cellulase. 